doing that I shouldn't really tell you because you might do it yourself, but I'm going to tell you that I do it, so don't do it, is that I don't really read the question. I just dive straight into it. I think I know what it's asking me, but I need to read the question and just be certain. Okay? It says, each student at a college studies one of four languages, so there's only four things they can do. Um, the table shows the property um, of a student chosen at random uh, studies German or Russian or French. Um, and then it's asked me to find the property that they study Spanish. Um, sorry, I forgot your name. Jenna. Jenna. Jenna's already told me that all probabilities must add up to one. So I know all of those must add up to one. So if I add those up, now bear in mind, I can do this in my head. I have got a calculator, just be certain. Okay, you'd hate to just do something wrong by just not sticking it into a calculator. So 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.5 comes to 0 0.8. Is that the answer for Spanish? No, Excellent, it's not. I need to do one, take away 0 0.8. Okay, so one take away 0 0.8 gives an answer of 0 0.2. I'm going to fill it in the table and I'm going to fill it in there just so definitely get the marks. Would you get more marks if you didn't fill it in the table? Yeah, you get full marks. If you put it in the dotted line, that's clearly where they wanted it, wasn't it? I'm just being sure. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there are 800 students at the college. Work out the number of studies, uh, students who study German. So what's the probability of me studying German? 0.2? So what I do is I do the probability and I multiply it by the number of... I call it number of trials. That's what the formula is to work every time, but in our case, trials is the number of people who are studying at the college. So I want to do 0 0.2 multiplied by 800. Um, so German, I went and looked in the oh, table. Using the table. Oh, that's it, that's it. 160 agrees? One hundred and sixty people studying German. Um, in terms of that formula, there you, you know it inherently. For instance, if I um, if I rolled a dice six times, how many times would you expect um, six to come up? Once, one out of six. You're basically doing one sixth times six in your head, and you're just knowing it. If I rolled twelve times, how many times would you expect to get it? Twice. Okay, so you're doing um, one sixth times twelve, which is the same as dividing by six. Okay. Um, right then, over the page. On the grid, draw the graph of y equals 4x minus 2. So how would we start doing that? Any ideas? Table. Excellent. Well done. You start by drawing an xy table. Okay. So whenever I do it, I always have certain values I use for x. And then y is equal to whatever x is times by 4. And then I subtract 2. That's what that means. Okay. What values are we going to use for x? Any ideas? I always use 1, 2, and 3. Just use the nice, obvious counting numbers. 1, 2, and and three. So this one here is saying four times x. Now what I um, so four times x, and this time x is one. So that's going to be four times one, and then we're going to subtract two. What was I doing first? There was I timesing one or taking away two first? Times one. Times by one. So I'm just going to stick brackets around that. Okay. So four times one. Take away two. And that comes to two. What am I going to do for the next column? 4 times 2. Excellent. So I'm keeping my calculator here. I'm using this replay button. So if I just press that one there, I can just come back to that formula, delete that one, change it to a 2, and I get my answer of 6. All good? And then just change it to a 3. 10. Okay. When you plot this, make sure you're plotting it correctly. Luckily for us, they've actually gone and drawn the scale in, so hopefully that's going to make things a bit easier. But remember, x is the one going across, y is the one going up. Okay. Uh, so we're going to plot 1, 2. So across to 1, up to 2. Across to 2, up to 6. And across to 3 and up to 10. What would have happened if I couldn't have plotted one of those coordinates? Any ideas? 
I would have just gone and tried a different number up in my table. So say I couldn't have plotted 310. Say I only went up to 8. I would have done 0 or I tried minus 1. But it shouldn't really come into effect, okay? But just in case it did. Okay? So when I go and do that, I make sure my ruler can go through all three points. It does. What would happen if it didn't? It's wrong. Well done. Okay, that's a good indication to see if you've done it correct or not. That's my graph there. For me, something like that is pretty, pretty big. Three marks. Okay. Do you notice something as well? If I could just bring your attention to this point here, can you see where the line um, goes through the y-axis? See, that's minus two. What was it on the graph at the end? 4x minus 2, whatever um, that we call that the y-intercept, that's where that graph should have gone through the y-axis. Well, you know there's only three points. Why yeah.